When it comes to the art of war, there's no vehicle quite as vital as the helicopter. Ripping its way through the skies, a well-armed chopper can make the difference between an embarrassing defeat and a truly epic win. Scouting for enemies and taking them out before they know what's hit them. But what are some of the deadliest helicopters out there? When it comes to classic-looking helicopters, there are none more iconic-looking than the Boeing AH-64 Apache. This American twin turboshaft attack helicopter has a tailwheel-type landing arrangement and a tandem cockpit for a two-person crew. Its nose-mounted sensor suite has everything from night vision systems to target acquisition, officially making this thing better at sniffing out enemies than Wolverine. And considering it is armed with a 1.18-inch M230 chain gun that's carried between the main landing gear under the aircraft's forward fuselage, as well as four hardpoints mounted on stub-wing pylons for carrying armament and stores, such as AGM-114 Hellfire missiles and Hydro-70 rocket pods. It's safe to say that once the Boeing AH-64 Apache has found that which it is sniffing out, that poor sucker isn't exactly going to receive a hug. Originally going by the name Model 77, this chopper was developed by Howard Hughes's company on behalf of the United States Army Advanced Attack Helicopter Program as a replacement for the AH-1 Cobra. To give you a sense of the timeline and how long these things can take, the first prototype took flight in 1975, two years before the release of the first Star Wars movie, and went into production in 1982, two years after the release of the second Star Wars movie. The Boeing AH-64 Apache was introduced into the U.S. Army service in 1986, three years after the release of the third Star Wars movie, with an advanced and refined model being delivered to the Army in March of 1997, two years before the release of the fourth Star Wars movie. Production of the units has continued to this day, with over 2,000 having been made as of 2013, two years before the release of the seventh Star Wars movie. While the United States is the primary user of the AH-64, this attack helicopter gets around more than Hugh Hefner did and is actually used by multiple other nations, including Singapore, the Netherlands, Israel, Greece, and Japan. They have served in multiple conflicts in Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, Panama, and the Persian Gulf. The AH-64 Apache is the proud owner of a four-blade main rotor and a four-blade tail rotor. The crew sits in tandem while its pilot sits both behind and above the co-pilot gunner, with both of them being capable of flying the aircraft and performing weapon engagements independently of each other. The whole thing is powered by two separate General Electric T-700 turboshaft engines that have, on either side of the fuselage, high-mounted exhausts. One of the most revolutionary features of the AH-64 is its helmet-mounted display. The integrated helmet and display sighting systems comes with many capabilities, including the ability for either the gunner or pilot to solve the helicopter's automatic chain gun to their helmet, meaning the gun will track head movements to the exact point where they are looking. That kind of precision would have made annihilating the Death Star a walk in the park. But it's not just the United States that is capable of releasing a lethal flying machine into the skies. France's own Eurocopter Tiger, also known as an Airbus Helicopter Tiger, can give the AH-64 a serious run for its money. Development on this four-blade twin-engine chopper started way back during the Cold War, and it was initially intended as an anti-tank helicopter platform that would be used against a possible Soviet ground invasion of Europe. Development was prolonged and, during this time, the Soviet Union collapsed rendering further development arguably more lacking in point than a ball. In spite of this, France chose to press on. Finally, come 2008, it achieved operational readiness. What makes this fella unique is that it has the proud distinction of being the very first all-composite helicopter ever produced in Europe. Right from the earliest model advanced features, such as stealth technology, high agility to increase survival, and a glass cockpit were incorporated. In the time since the helicopter's original unveiling, many improved variations have followed suit. Outfitted with far more powerful engines and compatible with a significantly wider range of weaponry, to date, Tigers, the helicopter, not the cat, have served in Libya, Mali, and Afghanistan. The story of the Tiger begins back in the most Orwellian of years, 1984 when the French and West German governments issued a desire for an advanced multi-role battlefield helicopter. 
But while a supplier was chosen, the development program was effectively cancelled a mere two years later due to the ever-increasing costs. But just one year later, the program was formally relaunched because it seems these guys just could not make up their minds as to what they wanted to do. In the relaunch, it was decided to put greater emphasis on the chopper's anti-tank capabilities. Come 1989, the work to date was impressive enough that the Eurocopter signed an agreement that financially secured the majority of the Tiger's development right through to serial production. Five prototypes were assembled, with one of them embarking on a 30 minutes test flight on the 27th of April 1991. Things were looking up for the Tiger program, but that would all change. Due to the end of the Cold War and the defense budget decreases of the 90s that subsequently came about, money pressures led to significant questioning as to the necessity of the Eurocopter Tiger. For several years, the project hung in status with no clear direction. But come 1996, a major agreement was struck between France and Germany that firmly cemented the Tiger's prospects, and it swiftly became a major project for Eurocopter again. By 1999, Germany and France publicly placed an order for 160 units, 80 for each nation. Come March 2002, the first production Tiger was finally rolled out. The Tiger can undertake a wide range of varying combat missions, everything from armed reconnaissance and surveillance to close air support and the escorting and protection of friendly assets. It can operate during day or night and in literally any weather condition. And we would hope so. Considering how long it took to make the things, you'd hope it would take more than a little rain to break them. But China had to get in on the action as well, bringing us the attack helicopter known as the CAIC Z-10, otherwise called the WZ-10. Developed by the People's Republic of China specifically for the purpose of anti-tank warfare, this chopper, first produced in 2003, also embarks on secondary air-to-air -air missions. CAIC Z-10 was first initiated by Chief Designer Wu Ximing in collaboration with Kumov Design Bureau of Russia and the 602nd Aircraft Design Institute, under contract with the Chinese government. The project formally kicked into gear in 1979 when the Chinese military studied the issue of countering large armor formations. Their conclusion that the only way to combat such a situation was via the use of attack helicopters. Come the mid-80s, they knew they had no chance but to develop a chopper dedicated to such a role. Until then, the Chinese army had been using civilian helicopters converted for military use, but that simply would not do in this specific situation. They were simply not adequate in an attack role, only as scouts. By 1988, they had secured an agreement with the United States to purchase AH-1 Cobras as well as a license to produce BGM-71 tow missiles. But the latter fell through due to the arms embargo that occurred as a result of the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989 and the color revolutions preventing the purchase of attack helicopters from Eastern Europe in both 1990 and 1991. With attempts to import foreign designers failing, the People's Liberation Army Ground Force aircraft was formed, better known hilariously as PLAGFAF. They conducted tactical experiments in order to define the future of their attack helicopter plans. Ultimately, a new missile was selected and the Z-10 got back on track. By the time of the Gulf War, the need for the choppers to be ready became urgent. The ever-evolving nature of the war also made clear to PLAGFAF that the featured helicopters were going to have to be able to defend themselves as well as attack. A new team was formed, called the Armed Helicopter Developmental Work Team, to develop an all-new medium helicopter design. Come 1994, a secret contract was signed with the Kamov Design Bureau of Russia to design and later verify the airframe and propulsion of the chopper. In order to maintain secrecy, the project was promoted as being civilian in nature and not at all war-related. By 1998, the 602nd Research Institute had a proposal. Either separate the armed helicopter program from the medium helicopter program or devote all resources to the former. As a result of this, the medium helicopter program did continue, albeit with reduced focus, as the majority of the effort and money went into the Z-10. The electronic warfare system of the Z-10 is the first Chinese electronics wear system to successfully integrate radar, radar warning receivers, 
laser warning receivers, electronic countermeasures, and electronic support measures. Though we don't know for sure, it has been said that the Z-10's radar system has a remarkably high interception rate of hostile signals and, when in the fully automatic mode, can analyze threats automatically, launching different decoys and jamming signals with ease. Truly innovative. But no talk of innovative, yet also lethal, helicopter design is complete without taking a look at Russia's contributions to the field. The MIL Mi-24 Oh, seriously, these names are so dull. Why don't helicopters have names like Dr. Brian Flabberflump? Well, it's a large Russian attack helicopter, low-capacity troop transport and helicopter gunship produced by Mil Moscow Helicopter Plant that has been operating for the Soviet Air Force and its successors since 1972. The core of the craft has two turboshaft engines, driving a mid-mounted five-blade main rotor as well as a three-blade tail rotor. This distinctive engine configuration gives the craft a unique double air intake. When designing the MIL Mi-24, the main objective was speed. To help achieve this goal, the airframe was incredibly streamlined and fitted with tricycle undercarriage landing gear that is fully retractable in order to reduce drag. The primary rotor was tilted away from the fuselage by 2.5 degrees to the right. It votes Republican in order to compensate for translating tendency at a hover. Meanwhile, the landing gear was tilted to the left so that the rotor could still be level whenever the aircraft is on the ground. Developers also ensured that the tail was asymmetrical in order to give a side force at speed, which would unload the tail rotor. A tweaked variation of the Mi-24 was even used in several different speed and time to climb world record attempts over the years. Over the course of these attempts, constant modifications have been made to the Mi-24 to make it as light as physically possible. Up until the final attempt, the speed record for such a craft had been, as of 1975, 206.7 miles per hour. But on September 21, 1978, the modified Mi-24 finally beat this. It proudly held a record until 1986, when the title was snatched by a modified British Westland Lynx, which still holds the record to this day. Attempting to compare the craft to more Western designs is tricky, as the Mi-24 has no clear NATO counterpart. The fact this beast is a combination of troop transport and armored gunship means it really stands out in the history of helicopters. In its long tenure, the Mi-24 has served in a multitude of ways, including the Ogaden War, the Chadian Libyan conflict, the Soviet War in Afghanistan, the Iran-Iraq War, the Nicaraguan Civil War, the Sri Lankan Civil War, the Clone Wars, the Gulf War, and the war in Abkhazia. Full disclosure, we may have added a fake one on for a joke. We'll let you decide which is which. Which of these choppers do you think is the deadliest? Let us know in the comments. Did we miss one? Let us know and we'll put it in our next choppers video. Make sure you don't miss it and subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.